let's look at um, another algorithm to uh, reduce noise in images. And this one is called anisotropic diffusion. So this, uh, again, tries to reduce noise within uh, constant regions, but uh, to avoid blurring over uh, boundaries. And it's based on the heat or diffusion equation from physics. So the idea is that places that have a um, large uh, difference in density or temperature perhaps, um, the um, equation, uh, the process tends to uh, smooth that out and achieve a constant result. But again, you don't want to do this across a boundary. So we need to detect a boundary and prohibit this from acting in that area. So we can do that by looking at the magnitude of the gradient. So let's um, write the equation, the diffusion equation in this form, where d is a function called the conduction coefficient. Here we're taking the gradient of the image um, and then the gradient of that final result. So ideally, at boundaries, we would want d to be equal to 0. Namely, we don't want any change to the image. Uh, so di dt equals 0. But um, inside of boundaries, we're away from the boundary. We do want to smooth things out. So we want d to be 1, for example, which in which case this equation would reduce just to the normal diffusion equation. So we're going to make d then. Um, a function of the magnitude of the gradient. So again, the, the high gradient indicates that we're near a boundary. So we want g to be a monotonically decreasing function. So something that would look like um, this. So it would start at 1 and then uh, decrease like that. So here is a animation of this type of filter working on these images. Um, as you can see, runs over, I guess, something like 30, 40, 50 iterations. With each iteration, the portion inside the, um, uh, the image gets uh, smoother, but does not blur across these boundaries. And um, I did find a uh, some code in MATLAB that does this. This is um, uh, from this location here. And the function is called um, anisodiff. And the parameters are shown here. So I'm going to apply the um, uh, this function to this equation here. So um, let me go ahead and just copy this code. So here is the, the image uh, corrupted by noise. And as you can see, as the iterations continue, um, let me just rerun that whole thing. So you have to add noise to it. So here is my uh, image. And if I go ahead and run the result on that, um, I get this. So as time goes on, it does tend to smooth out the um, image. All right, so let's look at spatial degradation. So now we're going to consider the case where we're, we're also going to apply a spatial degradation and then add noise. So um, here is, whoops, here is our original image F. We apply our process H and add noise. Um, and we'll consider processes that are linear in the sense that multiplying the input by a constant um, gives a result that is also multiplied by the same constant. Or, and also that adding, applying the process to the sum of two inputs gives us the result um, 
of applying the sum of applying the process to the the two individual pieces and we'll also look at uh, position invariant uh, degradation of this form if we can shift the image by a, dis a displacement a and b that also shifts the result by that same amount so it doesn't depend on where we are in the image the degradation acts the same way no matter where we are so blurring is typically like that in cameras um, so this is uh, then a convolution and we can express it mathematically in this form uh, taking our input image multiplying by the degradation function h and integrating over our neighborhood and if we were to apply the uh, degradation function to a delta function which is just an impulse so it's uh, non-zero only at the origin we get back the the filter itself okay so this is our model and again in the Fourier domain we can write it as uh, just a multiplication like this so if we if we know this degradation function we can undo it hopefully so we need to we need to find out what this degradation function is so one way to do that is by looking at a small area of the image so say a uh, sampled portion of our corrupted image now if we know what the non-degraded image is supposed to be there for example it's a it's a corner or a um, a dot or something like that then <coughs> excuse me then we can um, um, we, we can estimate h using um, this equation here another way to do it would be to experiment if we're fortunate enough to have the same imaging system say the same camera we could take another picture of an impulse of a bright dot and as we just saw that is that would give us the image of the uh, of the degradation function or finally if we have a lot of knowledge of the degradation process we can analytically derive its form and we'll see two cases of that uh, motion blur and atmospheric blur so let's look at atmospheric blur first um, so you can model the degradation of uh, an image as you view it through the atmosphere for example from a satellite or an airplane um, using this degradation function and this is the Fourier transform of that so it looks very similar to a Gaussian the only difference is this term um, 5 sixth whereas a normal Gaussian would have just a 1 as the exponent this has 5 sixth so it tends to give us a slightly uh, broader um, shape of a function like this and here is the result of simulating atmospheric blur on this image um, this is using a large amount of turbulence with a large value of k uh, a mild turbulence and a low turbulence here now motion blur is uh, what you would get if you uh, took a picture while you were moving the camera uh, so during the exposure things had had moved and we can model this as a trajectory uh, x of t y of t and we integrate our function over that path so we're basically adding up the pixels or the intensities all along that streak so for a, a linear motion uh, occurring over a time capital T this trajectory I could write as this equation here so it's some a times little t over big T for X and B T over T for Y so the um, that would be our degradation function and its transform would have this form and this is what a uh, the result would be on an image uh, simulated motion blur on this image okay so let's look at uh, how to undo this so the simplest way to undo a degradation a spatial degradation would be to divide by the degradation function because remember our our degraded image G is just F times H but actually it's uh, G is equal to F H plus N so if we divide by H 
we don't necessarily get back our our original image we also enhance the noise here so we're dividing n the Fourier transform of the noise by h the Fourier transform of our degradation function so in places where h is small for example at high frequencies we may have not pretty large values of n and so that would totally corrupt our result here so what we want to do is we want to not do this division where the values of h are small so here is an example of that we um, we take that uh, image of the the aerial image and uh, undo the most the atmospheric blur with that so this is the filter without regard of cutting off frequencies at high values so it's basically pretty worthless um, this image here we're cutting off the values beyond a certain radius so at high frequencies um, we don't divide by h we just leave the result as zero um, and this is the result uh, doing the same thing but for a different value of radius I guess this, this one's 40 and this one's 70 and this is doing the same thing for a radius of 85 so it is pretty sensitive as you can see um, to the exact radius that you use if you go from here to here